Hi, my name is Hannah Wyman and I'm a junior here at California University of Pennsylvania. I'm currently studying English with a concentration in journalism and then I have dual minors in history and in women's studies. So all these things kind of culminate in this poster presentation on how privilege in early journalism impacted and continues to impact female journalists. This research is done for a class in media history and I'm just interested in seeing how the trends we see today in newsrooms, how they are keeping women of color, LGBTQ plus women, women of a different class kind of out of the newsroom, how these trends can be traced back to what we saw in progressive era journalism, new era journalism, kind of the rise of women in journalism. So in early America, journalism was predominantly a man's career, a man's field. We didn't see many female reporters or writers or editors. But during the turn of the century, kind of between the 18th and 19th century, we saw people like Nellie Bly and Ida Tarbell enter the scene and they saw a lot of quick and a lot of strong success. Um, but this can be contributed to the privileges that they benefit from. So that is being white, being educated, having money. So their success kind of created this identity standard for other women who want to enter the field of journalism or want to move up to a different position in journalism. And it kind of kept other women out who don't have these privileges. And this can still be seen in newsrooms today. So one of the women I had mentioned, Nellie Bly, was a female muckraker who is known for her work in exposing mental institutions and their conditions in her work in 10 days in the Madhouse and then traveling around the world in 72 days for Pulitzer's New World newspaper. Ida Tarbell is another significant female investigative reporter whose works ex helped expose the illegal practices of Rockefeller, uh, which he used to monopolize the oil industry, which she wrote about in the history of the Standard Oil Company. Contrastly, Ida B. Wells Barnett was a investigative journalist during the 19th century as well, but she was black, unlike Bly and Tarbell, who are both white. And so because of her race, she faced different barriers as a woman in journalism. So she wrote for black newspapers and penned a lot of pieces on the mistreatment of African Americans and drew attentions to lynchings and whatnot, but she did not see the same success in the public eye that Bly and Tarbell had seen. So Bly, like I said before, saw great success, even at a young age at the world. She had great story ideas that her editor let her pursue. And so this cemented her place as one of the top, most powerful, well-paid reporters at the world. And then Tarbell also saw great success and became one of the most recognized reporters on McClure's team, which was later called the most brilliant staff ever gathered by a New York periodical. Yet Wells Barnett's work has often been overlooked and somewhat forgotten, um, even most recently. So we didn't really start talking about her until the 1970s. It is said that her aggressive and assertive personality often alienated and infuriated those around her. And so in death, her legacy fell victim to the prejudices she fought hard to overcome. And then making this more contemporary, recent research of women in media have found that women are more than half the US population, but and people of color nearly 40%. But those who staff the nation's news organizations don't reflect this diversity. So there's this dissonance between the two. Um, and so essentially American media companies have not hired or promoted enough women of color as journalists to allow newsrooms to reflect the perspectives of their readers and viewers, which um, is a pitfall of modern journalism, if you have too many of the same voice and not enough diversity in a newsroom. So essentially trends in modern America show that media does not create enough space for women, specifically women of color, like it does for men. The successes of Bly and Tarbell unintentionally created limits and standards for how the profession views women. So these women of color, these women of a different class, these women of different sexual orientations. They had to, and even today, continue have to overcome these standards set by privileged, white, wealthy women. 
And so, like I said, the way these women journalists are celebrated or described today in media has roots in early journalism, like we see from the difference between Bly and Tarbell's work versus um, Ida B. Wells's work. And so these two graphics I have on the slide are um, kind of a breakdown of the people who work in print. And as you can see, women of color only make up 8%, very low compared to the over 52% that men, white men make. And then white women make, although it's lower, it's still 31%, which is a great deal larger than women of color. And then on the right here, we have a cover of the New York world as Nellie Bly was traveling on, around the world. So like I said before, she saw great success. People loved her. They really um, kind of idolized the work that she was doing. And that's partly because she had the resources to do it and she had the team to back her up because of her privilege. And so if you'd like to see my preferences or seek further information and get in contact with me, you can just scan this QR code down here and it'll take you to a PDF document with all that information. And uh, thank you.